Uh, so I have no slides. Um, the, uh, I want to report on the family history working groups um, activities. Uh, we had um, a good, good group uh, since no one chose to follow Mark. Um, <laughs> and uh, we got fairly tactical, so we didn't really change um, from the themes I, I told you about um, uh, last night. Um, we had um, uh, the first uh, topic was about EPIC and electronic medical record integration of family history, which um, I think we were um, a little bit concerned and maybe somewhat discouraged to hear that in the room there were different versions of family history um, for, with EPIC users, which uh, I, I, I'm not personally familiar with, the, with, the, with this electronic medical record, but the fact that um, one, one would think that this would be standardized and yet it's, uh, it's not. So um, we, uh, we talked about um, uh, really um, the need for the uh, EMR to um, be designed to, for data capture and collection methods of family history that might encourage patient input um, and also to capture data from relatives to construct the family tree. Um, understanding the data flow um, as well as uh, importing potentially other clinical information for the purposes of developing more global risk calculators. Um, and uh, we also talked about how the family history might be represented in the electronic medical record. Um, you know, does it sort of really stand and f be fully integrated, um, which some of our uh, committee members uh, felt were, was absolutely essential for uh, fulfilling the meaningful use criteria, or could it be just a representation that's imported from, a, from another um, uh, standalone platform? Uh, so the bottom line is that, um, uh, as we discussed yesterday, um, we really need to have a um, a tete a tete with the uh, with Epic and maybe Cerner and the other developers of electronic um, <laughs> medical records to uh, under to have them share and understand and help hopefully collectively solve uh, some of these problems. We don't have an action item uh, point person on this yet, but I will go back to the committee and uh, try to uh, garner some representatives who have a, um, a strong inclination to do this. Uh, the second, um, I, if I can just add, I I think I mentioned yesterday and. Both the Northwestern group and uh, the uh, Mount Sinai group have been very actively engaged with uh, with Epic about the their genomic medicine and I want uh, their genomics piece uh, in the EHR and I wonder if maybe actually that might be a good place to focus that direction. Right. If there, we if we could uh, dovetail on to an ongoing conversation, that would be very useful. And Erwin mentioned that although he could not attend uh, our meeting yesterday, he certainly is interested in this for the Mount Sinai group. And I know that Maureen was also expressing interest uh, on your behalf. So, um, if, uh, later we'll figure out how to how to make that work. Uh, uh, the second topic that we uh, spent some time on, which was a very um, IT uh, jargon intensive discussion, which I can't, I don't want to repeat for you, uh, was about the use of uh, what we used to call social media for capturing family history data, but now we'll just call it expanded data capture to um, uh, maybe um, alleviate some of uh, uh, some of the fears that have been discussed earlier. But the idea is to use um, something called um, Web 3.0, um, which I wasn't familiar with until yesterday, and I'm not sure I am uh, even today, but to um, create uh, data structures and architectures that will allow um, families as a whole to collect information, uh, to deliver them uh, to um, either electronic medical records or to some standalone platform for assembling family history information. And uh, Jonas Almeida is, is really taking the lead on this, as, as he has been all along. Uh, and his proposal was really to um, really describe the, uh, the data architecture and structure and the governance features and publish that, which uh, in the field seems to be a, an important first step to get these types of things implemented, and then take the next step and, and figure out how do we actually take that architecture and, and, and link it to, um, uh, to some of the standalone platforms that already exist, such as the Mitri platform or the Intermountain Healthcare Family, uh, family um, uh, History uh, tool as well. And so that's something that we're going to pursue. And then the third uh, topic, which was really the one that had, for which we had the most discussion, is, um, is related to the demonstration project. And here um, we felt that the major goal was to deliver uh, an instruction book or a recipe book or something that could inform any practice environment of how to take up a family history tool and, and use and import it, integrate it, and effectively use it in, in their environment. Uh, and, and that would be sort of the overarching goal of the demonstration project. Um, we would um, uh, select multiple naive sites, naive sites being ones that don't currently have uh, family history uh, tools active in their, in their environments, which is just about everyone, and um, choose sites that either had or had not um, 
use the electronic me medical records so we can look at the pluses and minuses of, 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 that, um, of that variable. Uh, our goal was to create a toolbox of tools. Uh, so knowing that there are many uh, now uh, tools for particularly data collection, Surgeon General's tool, the ones that we described yesterday, and several others that we didn't have time to talk about yesterday, to, um, to allow um, uh, the users to select tools that would be best fitting for the environments uh, that, they, that they wanted to deploy them in, and, and that would be uh, a first step. And then we, we would also have a chance to compare and contrast the, the different um, uh, platforms uh, across, these different, uh, across these different venues. But critical is the fact that we would have a centralized um, server that would host the, um, the algorithms and the clinical decision support tools to which the data would be um, imported and then subsequently the results exported to the, to the individual provider. So all of that part would be standardized and I think people rallied around that and there was a lot of, again, um, fairly um, intensive IT related discussions about how all that data would flow and what would be some of the requirements for that. So essentially uh, a project might look something like um, figuring out what are the best data capture methods um, in the community um, and uh, exploring multiple collection methods, understanding whether the information is indeed accurate, which is a question that's come up several times about the validity of, of patient entered family history information. Uh, does the provider, uh, when they, do they actually, um, do they get the inf information, do they use it, how do they use it, and is it useful, and do this in some sort of iterative optimization uh, process. Um, as I mentioned, how should it be represented in the electronic medical record if one exists? Um, and then um, to test the hypothesis that having this information actually has a change in physician actions and patient behaviors. So the outcome measures would be along the lines of whether um, docs would recommend certain screening uh, tests or referrals to genetic counselors, whether patients would actually um, change their behaviors in, in a broad way, but also specifically to adhere to uh, physician advice and actually go on to get screened or uh, see a genetic counselor and those types of outcome measures would probably be very tractable in the short term uh, in addition to some other process measures. Uh, we also talked about the diversity of environments that this could be um, deployed in and, and particularly to address the, uh, uh, the disparities question which came up is to uh, seek the opportunity to uh, create a Spanish version of, of many of the tools that we're using so that we could um, uh, look at um, uh, uh, Spanish-speaking populations, which are probably underrepresented in most of the work that we do. Um, we also talked about the military as, a, as another interesting group to, um, to work with in this regard. So I think that's um, more or less where we, where we are right now, and um, in our next series of meetings, we're trying to refine this, particularly this last item, um, and target it for a submission to the, uh, to the NHGRI's RFA. Mark. Um, going back to the toolbox of, uh, of tools, which I think is a great idea, I know that one of the things that both Mitri and, and Our Family Health had done for the working group was to make uh, guest accounts available for logins so that individuals from the work group could go in and actually interact right. with the tools. Um, I think for those two tools and other tools that might be available, it would nice t uh, be nice to see if there would be uh, the opportunity uh, under this umbrella to um, uh, have more uh, guest accounts available so that people that are thinking about participating could actually go in and interact with the tools. So I would just put that on the table as something to discuss with those people that actually have the tools. So I think uh, in, the, in a, whatever we would call it, a pre-implementation phase for anybody to decide which tool was going to be relative, relevant to their uh, needs and environment to have a chance to uh, play around with them and all, as many of them as possible would be very useful. So we'll, we'll, we'll take that up. Pearl. Pearl. Yeah, um, you may also want to touch base with, uh, I think it was uh, Vince Bonham who did the uh, genetic literacy uh, meeting in which I was amazed at the folks who were there, the different concept of what family is. And when they talked about mm -hmm. doing family charts such as this, it's like the concept of parent is very different in different cultures. So, you know, with particularly getting off in disparities, I yeah. think he might be able to populate that with fact rather than my poor memory. 
we did have some discussion, not, not, not very detailed about that, but that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, and I think that just to uh, add on to that, that um, some of the resources that are available that I know are being used at both Duke and at Intermountain are ones that were developed out of a project that Genetic Alliance had run relating to community-centered family history that took into account those types of things so that resources could be customized that would explain, you know, what it is that we're trying to do. So I think some of that is in place already, but we can probably do a better job. Other discussion? Uh, let me just make one other point. I would just say if we took the study design, which I anticipate we will eventually come up with, and then uh, take out the word family history but put in pharmacogenetics or put in uh, uh, genome sequence data, I would hope that we could use the same type of paradigm, uh, you know, in, in, with some modifications to deliver the message that this is clinically useful and does result in changes in uh, clinical uh, decision-making and outcomes. Like that. Okay, uh, Murray. Murray's going to sit where he is. Right. We we didn't have um, uh, the, most of the 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 people in the work group um, are, are not here at this meeting, and uh, so we really didn't have uh, um, anything any changes from from um, uh, yesterday's presentation. Uh, uh, I, I I was uh, given uh, a number of, of other suggestions, uh, so. So, of course, we want to go ahead with the demonstration project um, uh, with uh, pharmacogenetics for, for uh, dental patients. Um, but other suggestions, uh, for example, uh, John Harley suggested um, yeah, looking at uh, periodontal microbiome and, um, and rheumatoid arthritis um, is, a, is of interest. Um, and um, we also had uh, a, a suggestion about uh, chemotherapeutic um, um, agents and, uh, that affect bone loss and, and such. So, so there, there are other areas of this where this could, could go. Um, and uh, right, right now, we're, as I mentioned before, we're uh, working to, to come up with a, uh, a network of institutions. And I, I would just ask um, all of you here that if, you, uh, if your institution, um, you know, uh, sees uh, dental patients or is interested in uh, microbiome research to, to please uh, uh, get in touch with those folks or, or get those folks uh, to be in touch with, with me, uh, and we'll include them in the, in the working group going forward. Again, our, our goal here is to, is to come up with, um, with, with sort of best practices of collecting data and uh, to, to um, allow sharing across a, a network. So. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Okay. Other comments? I think if we don't have comments, Murray, just keep on keep on keeping on. It'll it'll happen. Uh, I'm I'm getting convinced. 